What started as a Saturday morning coffee date turned into a podcast where we chat about things like faith, family, finances, and so much more. We're just a husband and wife living this devoted life, and we're here to help you live this devoted life too. If you enjoy this podcast and want to help support our ministry, there are a few things you can do. Please subscribe to this podcast, leave us a review, and share these episodes with your friends so that you can help them live this devoted life too. Welcome to another episode of This Devoted Life podcast. We are coming at you from Kauai, which is the third and last stop of our, I guess what you would call a second honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we are, uh, we've been experiencing a lot of rain since being here, but yeah. so far um, the island is beautiful and it looks like today we might actually get a little bit of sun this afternoon. So we're hoping to hit up some hiking spots. And uh, yesterday we tried um, what's called a puka dog, which yep. I don't know if you can get that anywhere else in Hawaii. Yeah, we were in the very uh, middle of of the southern end yeah. of the island. We were in po- right? yeah. Po'ipu, yep. um, and we tried a puka dog, which they were very good. Uh, they yeah. had like a, a pineapple salsa in yeah. it. Yeah, yep, kind of a unique little mix of, of things, some mustard, pineapple salsa. I don't know if you can hear the roosters growing outside. <laughs> uh, we had the doors closed and things, but uh, yeah, we are definitely living the Hawaiian life right now. Yeah. But um, yeah, so the kind of a random mix of flavors, actually really good, and we uh, we grabbed it, walked across the street, street sat on the beach and uh, I was actually sitting on the ground yeah. but uh, and apparently yeah. <laughs> the puka dogs are so good that even the birds like them the birds because, definitely like because James got attacked <laughs> by two birds like not one but two birds yeah. one swooped in landed on top of his puka dog which I don't think we really explained those are kind of like a, a giant hot dog yeah, yeah. Um, and one swooped in he had to throw half of his puka dog away because a bird landed on it and then while he's sitting there <laughs> I just started dying laughing a yeah. Yeah, she thought it was really funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a chicken jumped up and started attacking his back yeah. for this puka dog. It did. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just sitting there enjoying my pukas. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, very, uh, very desirable there on the beach, evidently. <laughs> Apparently, so. so. Yeah. But, anyways, I guess we'll kind of dive into yeah. today's topic. Um, it's as we mentioned in the previous episode, we uh, polled the Instagram community just to ask what they wanted to discuss in the uh, on, uh, related to the topic of marriage while we were here on our trip because we wanted to while we were focusing on our marriage and yeah. while it was fresh and just like we were spending time you know, strengthening our marriage, we thought it would be fun to talk about some of the things that, you know, we're talking about on our trip too. But one of the things that was asked repeatedly was for intimacy in marriage. Yeah, there were like several uh, questions about that, yeah. like specifically about, you know, intimacy and how each other thinks about it and approaches it and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think specifically one of them was, was when one of your spouse has a higher sex drive than the other and how to navigate that. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, you know, as we discussed this, we were trying to figure out if we even wanted to tackle this topic because it is a very intimate topic. And so I guess as we start discussing this, we are not going to be um, talking about anything specific related to our marriage, Mm -hmm. but we thought that it was worth talking about. So we are going to um, just kind of discuss the things that we have talked about over the years. Yeah. And I think that we, again, like you said, we don't want to share super personal things, obviously. Out of respect Um, for our own marriage. Yeah. Out of respect for our own marriage, we want to, um, you know, very much uh, keep things, um, just helpful to you. So that's why we're approaching this. And at the same time, we want to not put things out on the interwebs uh, for (laughs) for the rest of time that uh, maybe, you know, in the future, we might look back and and wish we hadn't. So um, so hopefully this is something that is helpful to you. Uh, We'll probably recap some of this uh, later. But if you have specific questions that come up while we're talking that maybe you wish we would have gone just a little bit uh, more uh, in depth on, we will, uh, you know, definitely not be opposed to, uh, you know, expounding upon those in yeah, future and, episodes. And more of and like answering. a one-on-one setting too. So like if you do have yeah. a specific question, um, like you said, we just didn't want the entire world to hear like specifics yeah. about our marriage, yeah. you know? So uh, punchline is we want to be helpful, but we're not going to be overly sharing. So hopefully <laughs> that makes go. sense. <laughs> you know, it was funny because when we first got married, um, I remember specifically we were on a drive somewhere and James noticed that there was a billboard and on it was a very, 
you know, sexualized figure of a woman. Mm -hmm. And it kind of sparked a really good conversation. This was maybe a year into our marriage. Um, And he asked me, he said, do you think that media has played a really big uh, role in how we view sex as a culture? And, Mm -hmm. you know, that was something that we had kind of um, taken the time to hash out a little bit is, why do we view sex the way that we do in today's Mm -hmm. society? And I do think that, um, you know, media has played a lot into that where women are hypersexualized. Men now view women as um, they're supposed to perform or act in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to marriage, like you almost feel like you can never live up to that standard Mm -hmm. that has been set by media. You know, it's, it's an unrealistic expectation that media has set for us. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's been talked about a lot, but like, like you said, I mean, that came up, you know, what, 14 years ago now. And so uh, we, we're not just going to, you know, bring up things that we've known in society has become an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, but kind of in my mind, I like to go way back. You know, I mean, obviously people have been on both ends of the spectrum for centuries, thousands of years. And so and we're not saying that it's just media that has created the society that we live in today or mm-hmm. just a certain you know topic or you know, media outlet or things like that. Um, it's been going on for decades, for centuries, whatever. But it's more, I think, the more you talk about things uh, publicly and show them publicly and you know address them publicly, then it's something that kind of just gets embedded in our societies as you know, okay, well, if they did this or didn't do that, then, you know, now you take it to the next generation takes it to the next step and the next step and the next step. And now, you know, as you know, I mean, you know, you can literally within seconds see probably anything that you want to see, right? You know, in any device and anything. And it's just become so dangerous for marriages, for relationships, before marriage. Um, Just, you know, there's just so many different attacks on the nuclear family, um, a good marriage and a godly marriage and just building that foundation, right, Mm -hmm. that, uh, that we need. Because Again, as in the in the last episode, we talked about the the turbulence on that bumpy plane ride. There's just so many things that can creep into a marriage that um, that can you know really you know bring you mm-hmm. to a crash landing or uh, you know the people hit that eject button. So. Yeah, you know, like we are talking about how our society is so hypersexualized, but I also want to bring it back and talk about how good sex really is within mm-hmm. marriage. You know, you'd um, yeah, the, it's very important. It's very yeah. important, and so you know. There, there's a whole book of the Bible, Song of Solomon, that mm-hmm. is dedicated to that. And Solomon even wrote in Proverbs to enjoy the wife of your youth, you mm-hmm. know? And so sex is a good thing. Um, I'll have you read Song of Solomon 518 there too. All right. So Song of Solomon 518, a lovely deer, a graceful doe, let her breasts fill you at all times with delight and be intoxicated always in her love. Wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> so like we started this off with saying that our society is so hypersexualized, but then if you go and read the entire book of Song of Solomon, you also learn that sex is just a really good and beautiful thing within mm-hmm. marriage. And so we want to make sure that we are presenting that in the right light because sex is something that when done within marriage is a beautiful, freeing, um, it's a it's, it's a, a union, it's a connection. Yeah. You know, marriage is a earthly representation of Christ and the church. And Mm -hmm. so that is something that has been gifted to us and we should enjoy it and be ravished with one another. And so, you know, like as we are trying to talk about this topic of when someone's, you know, sex drive is higher than the other, I think it just boils down to what we say in every single episode, I feel like, is that it all boils down to communication between your you and your spouse. It really does, yeah. And um, I mean, on so many levels. But I'll uh, I'll say one just random thing, that you know, sex really is kind of in its, in and of itself a form of communication, right? You yeah. know, so that connection and you know, obviously, you know, body language and all you know, you know, vo- vocal, just all different things. Um, it's an important part of mm-hmm. our marriage. And I use the analogy. You've probably already heard me use it. Um, 
um, or just more of a statement, I should say, and I'm sure you'll probably have to put up with it hundreds of more times, but I always like to bookend things in life. So you obviously have one end of the spectrum and the other in any scenario in life, and that's that rings true in several ways uh, on this topic. So it's not just the man um, that always has the higher sex drive than the woman, um, and there's both ends of that spectrum. You know, maybe maybe both you and your spouse, if you have a spouse, um, then are listening to this, are you know close to the middle, and maybe you never have even thought that this might be an issue, or mm -hmm. you know maybe it's the you know uh, a woman that has the higher sex drive than the man, or whatever. It's just, but if you're not communicating and talking about those things, then it can it can lead to frustration. Mm -hmm. It can lead to resentment. Mm -hmm. It can lead to all kinds of things that just those little seeds that, um, you know, just grow up into big issues of um, contention in mm -hmm. your marriage. And uh, it's just something that should be enjoyed and not a, uh, you know, a, a pain point in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks about how a wife is supposed to respect her husband and a husband is supposed to love his wife. And when you are doing that and you're communicating it between the two of you, you're going to um, find that happy medium. I feel like when you are, when you have the other person in mind, always, mm -hmm. um, you're going to just have a, have a beautiful intimacy within your marriage. And one thing that you actually touched on was just how important sex actually can be. And yes. when, and when something is important, you make it a priority and it's something that this, this is actually, it seems kind of like a silly illustration, but, mm -hmm. um, years ago I had, um, a young women's Bible study that I was attending at a church and a lady there who was, I don't know how much older she was than us, but much more experienced than we were. Like they had older kids. And she told me, she goes, it sounds like the most unromantic thing in the entire world. She said, but I actually write the days that we're going to have sex in our calendar. Mm -hmm. And I was like, are you serious? Like that just like, <laughs> that seems like it would take all of the wind out of the sails. You know, it's like, there's no spontaneity in that. And she said, well, she said, the reason that you do that is because as women, some Sometimes it does take us more intentionality to desire sex. You know, like we're so busy with our kids and our house. And like a lot of times women just are not, um, you know, wired the same way and don't, ha don't have that need quite as much as a man does. Mm -hmm. But as a wife, if I know that that is a big need, you know, for my husband, being intentional with that and scheduling it in, she was like, it gave me the mindset to think about it throughout mm -hmm. the day and just to be, not to be prepared for it, because that sounds really bad, but just to you know, prepare her mind and her body physically to enjoy it later on. It was an intentionality that allowed her to fully enjoy sex later. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, again, that's so foreign to me, um, <laughs> to, you know, I mean, I, I think I have to schedule in uh, time to think about other things in, uh, in, in my day. But, um, honestly, I think that is important because, and maybe that's even another thing that, um, our media and the world that we're living in today, um, you know, portrays is that, you know, it just has to be, you know, these, you know, certain things and amazing, you know, all the time. And, you know, this spontaneity and stuff. And it's like, as probably all of us know that are, uh, you know, listening to this and obviously us, you know, with four kids and, you know, full-time job mm -hmm. and you, you know, homeschooling and things like that, there's plenty of things that distract us during our day. And, you know, I mean, it's something that, you know, I mean, we, we schedule all the other important things in our exactly. life, right? You know, yep. so why not schedule that, you know, and just to make sure that, um, you know, your spouse feels important mm -hmm. and things like that too. I think, um, you know, I, I've said to you before, like, um, you know, it's not that we're do, like, I could do a lot more romantic things for you and, you know, make you even more of a priority than you are in my life. But like, you know, I, I buy you flowers quite regularly. Um, we, you know, again, we've talked about, we go on dates regularly. Um, you know, I could do a better job of scheduling them all out and, you know, kind of that pre-marriage, um, you know, just, you know, uh, romantic ideas and extravagant things. But like, if I never, ever 
made you a priority and you know, bought you those flowers and things like that, then that would be a problem, right? You right. know, I mean, you would feel not as desired and mm-hmm. you would feel a little let down, I think, honestly, it's just human nature, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and so um, I think as, um, as a man, um, you know, if, if sex is never a priority, then that that can lead to the, those, you know, kind of seeds of resentment mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe just frustrations and things. And it's not like it, again, it's, it's that communication, mm-hmm. you know, you have to make sure as a man or woman, if you're not, you know, getting enough sex, um, then talk about it or at least try to talk about it and and not talk about it in a way that is like putting your spouse down or, you know, yeah, you're just a big letdown. Yeah. I wish I would have, you know, uh, whatever, you know, and it's more of, you know, just approaching that subject and, and letting your spouse know the importance of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just have fun, you know, have yeah. fun with it, you know, may schedule it in if you need to, but make sure that it's not just a mundane, you know, check the box type right. thing, um, all the time. Maybe it needs to be like that every once in a while, right. but, you know, well, I, mean, I think like you say in the, bringing it back to the scheduling in, I want to make sure too, and point out the fact that even though it's scheduled, doesn't mean that it always happens either, because once again, that's where the communication comes yeah. in. It's yep. like, okay, so we planned on doing it, you know, today or whatever, <laughs> it just is kind of awkward to talk about, but, um, you know, like, okay, so we have this scheduled in and it's like that day you're not feeling well or whatever. Then for your spouse to be demanding and say like, oh no, this was our day and we're going to do this. Right, like yeah. this is where communication is in play. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. um, I just, I think that that's where you guys have to be able to talk about it. And that's where, when you are putting the other's needs kind of above your own, which I don't want to say that either, because like you obviously need to take care of, you know, yourself too, but Mm -hmm. you have to make sure that as if I love you, I want to make sure that I am taking care of you. And sex is a big part of Mm -hmm. that for men, you Mm -hmm. know? And so I think that's kind of just where I wanted to. Yeah. Leave that. Yeah. And I, um, that make sure we are not talking about things that are dangerous or that make you feel super uncomfortable or, um, you know, obviously there, you know, I mean, there can be a lot of abuse, right. Right. You know, in, in this area. And that's where communication and love and respect within marriage is a huge thing because there are obviously lines that you don't want to cross. Right. Like with each other, you know? Yeah, no question. And that it, it shouldn't be an uncomfortable thing, but at the same time you, I think it's, it's healthy to have an open mind and, you know, not, um, you know, be, it's just like that last one thing, you know, as you're crawling into bed and you're super tired and it's just, you know, well, okay, you know, today's our day, you know, <laughs> you know, all the time and you know, have some spontaneity in there. And, um, again, I don't, it's, it is a tough topic, but it's not really, obviously sex is, you know, part of, uh, pretty much everyone's life, you know, that's married, you know, especially obviously, you know, and so that is something that is just, it it is an important topic. It's one that we didn't want to skirt around, um, without being able to share super intimate detailed things. (laughs) It, um, you know, as far as schedules and, and all of that, um, it it can be a little tough to talk about, but I do think that having, um, just, again, some spontaneity, some, you know, just mix it up, you know, use your imagination on all kinds of different, you know, things and places and, you know, just whatever it, whatever it takes and keep uh, your marriage fresh. Um, I, you know, again, I was on a, a business trip recently and, you know, there were a few guys there that had just gone through a divorce recently and, you know, all of a sudden they're, they're in shape again, you know, <laughs> they're in their, you know, forties to fifties and it's like, you know, they look a lot better than when I saw them last year. And, you know, honestly, it, it pained me a little bit to think that, um, you know, they just, it, they, they let themselves go and they didn't have like a physical ailment or something in their life Mm -hmm. that, that kept them from, you know, staying fit or whatever. Um, but you could tell that, you know, just whatever it was in their life, they just, they let, 
made other things a priority than their marriage and then their family and you know whether it was you know, I, I honestly have no idea what it was but their marriage fell apart and now they're on the dating scene and they're trying to look good and it's like look good for your spouse right now. <laughs> date We're, your spouse. Yeah, date yeah. your spouse. Um, you know, be romantic. And usually romantic things can lead to, you know, sexual <laughs> things a lot of times. And so have some fun and um, understand that Maybe maybe your spouse is coming at this from a selfish standpoint, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, they don't have the right heart behind things. It, but um, you know, maybe talk about that. Maybe that's something. Maybe that's the place to start. Mm -hmm. And you know, those frustrations. You know, again, I think one of the questions literally used the word frustration. Yeah, like well, how do you and, deal with the frustration of a spouse who has a higher sex drive? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And, and it can be. I'm assuming. You know. Yeah. Because uh, you know, there can be frustrations from you know uh, towards a spouse that has too little of a sex drive, but that isn't a barrier to just let build higher and higher yeah. and not talk about things. That's actually the obstacle in the way that leads to the the most value and success yeah. in in marriage. You know, so um, so try to. Uh, have a heart of understanding, um, have, uh, again, both sides. That's where if both of you, again, that analogy mm -hmm. of, you know, giving 100%, both of you, then it's pretty much guaranteed that you'll both be satisfied in a good, healthy way um, rather than, you know, me giving 50% toward that and expecting a hundred and fifty percent from you right. and you know and you it and then it really starts to unravel fast and right. that can be in any area in life but it, it also is true in in you know sex and marriage so. yeah it definitely you know just I wish that we had a little bit more specific things maybe to share to help in a situation like yeah. that but the only thing that we just kept coming back to was communication because mm -hmm. we don't know what your marriage looks like or mm -hmm. what um, needs and desires are within your marriage. And so we just want to communicate or encourage you to communicate yes. together and to have both of you have an open mind when communicating about it. And it is kind of like a, an awkward topic. Like sometimes like James will want to be talking about it and I'm like, I, I, just, I just, I don't want to talk about this right now, you know? And yeah. so it's just so like, then I wait five minutes and bring it up again. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but like sometimes, yeah. sometimes conversations take multiple efforts. It's not a yeah. one and done. It's something that, you know, we have continued to talk about, continue mm -hmm. to build and grow throughout our marriage. And so once you communicate, you're not done. It's something no, that you need yeah. to continue to communicate through. Yeah, so. That's a very good point. It, it actually is one big conversation. It you is. Know? Yep. We've had a 15 year conversation about <laughs> it. Uh, but no, that is a very good point. Like yeah. you said, it's not like you can just check that box as well right. you know, or either, I should say. So, yep. um, so, you know, make sure that, um, yeah, that, that open mind again, you know, you can think of, you know, well, it's like, you know, maybe that could lead to things that you don't want to deal with or whatever. But um, having a closed mind is leads to that frustration and mm -hmm. that dead end, you know, yeah. so you know, having um, an open, open mind with the conversation mm -hmm. at, at the very least. And, um, and again, just, you know, try to understand that, um, on both sides, you know, you, you come home and it's on the schedule for that day, but you know, the kids were terrible. Mm -hmm. It was chaotic. You, uh, had a very frustrating day at work or whatever it might be. Um, obviously that flexibility in life, you know, matters a lot too. And, um, you know, maybe you just, you know, talk about making it extra special the next time. Yeah, so. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so I guess just to kind of circle it all back around is we just want to make sure that we were very clear that sex is good, it's biblical, it's important for your marriage, and you need to talk about what you desire, what you need, and your spouse needs to be able to be free to share that as well, mm -hmm. um, no matter what side you're of or end of the spectrum that you may be on as far as desire goes. Um, but yeah, it just boils down to sex is good mm -hmm. and you need to communicate about it to have a healthy relationship in that area. Very good. Yeah. Great yep. way to wrap it up. And I think that, um, you know, again, if we kind of glossed over some areas that you wish we would, uh, have expounded upon a little bit more, uh, definitely let us know, send us a message. Uh, this is something that is important. Um, 
that's very important in marriage, um, <laughs> but that uh, it's important in life and to be the best spouse, the best parent, the best uh, community member um, that uh, you can be. I think it's uh, it's it's good to make it a priority. Definitely. Well, I guess that's a wrap. Until next time, seek God, love your spouse, hug your kids, and stay devoted.